بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ایوری باڈی ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ دا نیکسٹ ٹاپک آف دا بیسک آرگینک کیمسٹری اینڈ دیٹ از دا ریئیکشن انٹرمیڈیٹس یو نو دیٹ ریئیکشن انٹرمیڈیٹس آر دا انسٹیبل اور شارٹ لیوڈ اسپیشیز وچ آر پروڈیوسڈ بائی دا بانڈ کلیویج آف دا ریئیکٹنٹ مالیکیولس Now what is bond cleavage? In order to understand this, you may watch my lecture of the types of the bond cleavage in the playlist General Organic Chemistry or Basic Organic Chemistry. As these are the very short-lived species, so their half-life is almost equal to or slightly greater than 10 raised to power minus 6 seconds. The reaction intermediates that we commonly observe or study in the organic chemistry include the carbocations or carbonium ion, carb anions and the carbon free radicals. So these are the three reaction intermediates that we commonly observe in the organic chemistry. Now let us discuss them one by one. What is a carbocation? A carbocation is a carbon having six electrons in its valence shell and it also carries the positive charge. This is the definition of the carbocation. Now this one is the carbocation in which these are the six valence electron in form of the three bond pairs while one p orbital is empty. And now listen very carefully that this empty p orbital plays a vital role in the racemization during the organic reactions. In the SN1 reaction, the racemization takes place because of this empty p orbital. So the number of valence electrons are 6. As this carbon is suffering from the shortage of octet, its valence electrons should be 8, but the valence electrons are 6, so it is electron deficient. It will act as a Lewis acid and other than Lewis acid, it will also act as an electrophile. Now, it is diamagnetic. Why? Because all these six electrons are paired electrons. So, all the six electrons are paired and due to absence of unpaired electron, this carbon will behave as a diamagnetic carbon. This carbon is sp2 hybridized and as it is sp2 hybridized so it is triangular planar its geometry is triangular planar or trigonal planar it is formed in the polar solvents and how it is formed in the polar solvents it is formed in the polar solvents because of the heterolysis or heterolytic fission again in order to understand the heterolytic fission please watch the lecture on the types of the bond cleavage and it is stabilized by electron donating groups. Electron donating groups are the groups that donate electrons. They show the positive inductive effect. I have discussed the stability of carbocation and carb anion in the lecture on the inductive effect. So instead of wasting time in this particular lecture, I will recommend you to watch the inductive effect please. And what is the stability order? Tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary, then primary, and then methyl carbocation. So, this lecture can be understood in a much comprehensive manner if you watch the lecture on the inductive effect and types of the bond cleavage. Then this lecture will be quite easy for you to understand. Now, what is carbonyl? A carbonyl is the carbon having 8 electrons in its valence shell in the form of three bond pairs and one lone pair and it also carries the negative charge. So the number of electrons are 8, its octet is complete. So it will not act as a Lewis acid. Rather because it is having negative charge as well as the lone pair of electron, it is electron rich so it will act as a good nucleophile and it is a charged nucleophile actually. Again there are 8 electrons in the form of 4 pairs 
so it will also be diamagnetic. This carbon is sp3 hybridized. But because it has three bond pairs and one lone pair, and you know when a central atom has three bond pair and one lone pair around it, then its symmetry is trigonal pyramidal, just like ammonia. You have studied it in Vesper theory. It is formed by heterolysis or heterolytic cleavage. It is stabilized by electron withdrawing groups because electron withdrawing groups will withdraw the electron from the negative carbon and its negative charge will be decreased and its stability will be increased. Now the stability order is that methyl carbonyl is more stable than primary and secondary and the least stable one is the tertiary one. Now last one is the carbon free radical. A carbon free radical is a carbon having seven electrons in its outermost cell out of which three are the bond pairs and one electron is the unpaired electron, unshared electron. So you can say that this carbon has odd number of electrons in its valence cell that is seven. Because this carbon has one unshared electron so it will always be looking for some species that will share electron with it or it will always be looking for an electron in order to pair up this single electron. As it is always in search of the electron, so it will behave like a neutral electrophile. As one electron is unpaired, so it will be paramagnetic in nature. Again, it will be sp2 hybridized. And because of sp2 hybridization, it will be trigonal planar. It is formed by homolytic cleavage or homolysis. It is stabilized by antioxidants. Antioxidants are the species that will share electron with it and they will stabilize the free radicals. And what is the order of the stability? Again, tertiary is more stable than secondary, then primary and then methyl free radical. The reason is because when we discuss the tertiary free radical, now look at this. This one is the tertiary carbon free radical. So this electron is not easy to approach because of the presence of the bulkier group. So it will be more stable. But if we make it secondary, then here will be hydrogen. Now you can see that the protection of this single electron that is weak now. And this electron can be reached easily now as compared to the tertiary so it will be involved in reaction more easily that's why it will be more reactive as compared to tertiary and less stable if it is primary then obviously only a single bulky group is surrounding the carbon so this electron is quite exposed due to which it will be more reactive and if that is methyl then this electron is easiest to be approached because no bulky group is protecting it. There is no steric hindrance. So that's why it will be the least stable or the most reactive one. For discussion of the or for understanding the stability of carbocation and carb anion, please watch the lecture on the inductive effect. And in order to understand the types of the bond cleavage, you must watch the lecture on the types of the bond cleavage. Both these lectures, you can find them in the playlist Basic Organic Chemistry. If you will watch these two lectures, then that lecture will be quite easy for you. So this one is a comparison of the carbocation, carbonyl and carbon free radical. If the difference is required in the exams, you can write it down. Or there are every point is uh, an MCQ. So the multiple choice questions, they can also be solved if you have an idea of these three. This was all about the types of the reaction intermediate. In the next lecture, we will come up with the types of the reagents. Till then, Allah Hafiz.